Today we'll take a quick look at some of the new features introduced in the daily builds in December 2016. So 1.6 features uh, improved sampling for HDRIs with high contrast. That is, for example, ones with the sun embedded in the image. And if you want to use that as your main lighting, 1.6 will uh, give you significantly less noise for the same amount of render time. So in uh, this image I have two, one from 1.5, which we're looking at now, and another one from 1.6, both rendered for exactly the same amount of time. No denoising, of course. So this is 1.5, you'll note a fair amount of noise on the front of the truck, uh, and on here, and on the side of the truck. And you'll even see it here, in, uh, even despite the texture, so you can see it on the corrugated iron in the concrete. And I'll just flick on 1.6, same amount of time, you'll see much cleaner on the front of the truck and especially here on the side. Let me just flick back and forth and you can see those changes. And let me just uh, enable the layer mask and I'm just going to move that back and forth and you'll be able to see the noise change. So that's one of the improvements in the 1.6 daily build. Curves have been added, just enable it, hit the editor. Um, you can adjust the overall values like this. You can zoom out to uh, work outside the 255 range. Um, you can modify the red, green and blue independently. Let's just reset that. If I use red, I'm going to use pick, which lets you pick uh, intensities from the image. And then we can modify the red, swap over and I'll change the green. Um, let me just pull that down a little bit more and I can switch from cubic to linear and then I get a, a harsh straight line change versus a smooth change. Okay, let's just reset that. Uh, I can also display the background graph as logarithmic, cumulative or linear. Um, lastly, you can hit equalize which uh, then gives you a set of points that you can still manually adjust, of course. I'm just gonna play with these here and you can uh, load and save your curves. Let me just overwrite a curves 2 I have and I'll load a curves 1 and I can go back and forth to compare the two I think I prefer the first one and of course you can enable and disable it with a single click though so that's curves. Triplanar mapping has been added um, you can add that as an extra node in the uh, Material Editor, and this is uh, the um, Material Sphere for mastering CGI, and uh, I've applied the checker to it uh, using the conventional default settings, so it's using the object's UV map, uh, and I can just go ahead and replace that with uh, the same checker fed through the triplanar. I'm using self-illumination here just uh, so you can see things nice and clearly without any change from the lighting. Uh, we can adjust the blend, and uh, before I do that, I'm going to feed in a separate texture map to the Y, a separate texture map to the Z. I've disabled the use map for all axes, and now when I adjust the blend, you can see uh, how it will blend between it. We can uh, add a noise into the blend slot, and you'll see it then roughens up the edges. And that's how you would mix uh, textures. And uh, of course, you don't need UV maps when you use this. Let's just assign this very simple pre made material. Um, and uh, what you can see here is that it's more corroded on the top and nice and shiny on the sides. Uh, of course, you can get much more sophisticated than that, but that's a nice quick example introducing you to the triplanar mapping. We've introduced uh, soft edges for the uh, render regions. Um, so let's fire up the interactive renderer. Let's create uh, a region just as usual, um, but let's click create a second one. And now if I hold control and click on the edge, I'll get uh, a new green square which represents how uh, wide the feathering and softening of the render region edge will be. And each render region can have that amount adjusted independently. Um, very easy to use. You can resize it afterwards just with a simple left click on the green square. Uh, you don't need to control click for the second change. And if we zoom in, you can see the difference between the conventional hard-edged render region on the right and the softened render region on the left. 
We've added an option to prevent lights rendering as black when they use directionality. Um, just going to introduce some directionality in this render and you can see the light goes black. That's actually physically accurate because the light from there is no longer reaching the camera because I've narrowed it into a cone. However, it does look a little bit unusual in the image. So what we can do is uh, check the new option under the light, which is prevent black appearance. Uh, and it will still uh, render with the light color, even though the uh, cone of light is actually no longer reaching the camera. Uh, very useful in uh, a great many cases. Now in 1.5, applying a LUT would actually clamp the final values in the image to one or less, as we can see here. Uh, and let me just save that as a 32-bit EXR. And switch to 1.6, we'll do exactly the same thing. Let's have a look at the value. You'll see it's no longer clamped uh, to an RGB of 1 as a maximum. And um, of course, that's very handy in a 32-bit workflow. Let me just save this one to a 32-bit EXR, load them into Photoshop, and place them side by side. And uh, I'm going to adjust the exposure in each um, output. So let's start with 1.5. And of course, it had no extra information. The image was clamped into the, the visible range. So when I bring that down, then things look a bit flat and unrealistic. Whereas if I adjust the exposure in 1.6, where the LUT did not clamp the output, you can see we have a, a much more realistic effect, exactly as we'd expect. Uh, so that's one of the other differences between uh, 1.6 and 1.5. There are two new features in the daily build of Corona 1.6 that came out on December the 13th. Um, I will show you the first. I'm just going to start up interactive rendering. Uh, and the first is the ability to pan and zoom inside the Corona VFB. So let's just zoom in. Say I'm particularly interested in this bottle. I can zoom in and inspect it. You'll note the zoom is the same as zooming in once a render is complete. And that is, uh, you will see the pixels when you begin to zoom in uh, close enough. Uh, we're not actually changing the resolution of the render in any way. Uh, and you'll also notice that Corona focuses all the processing on the area I've zoomed in at, which is ideal because if you're zooming in to focus on uh, a particular area or a particular object, you don't want Corona rendering all the stuff that's now off screen. Uh, and as you can see, I can zoom and pan to my heart's content. Uh, a very good way to uh, focus in on an area or object of interest. I'm just going to stop that and let me just uh, swap views and start an interactive here. The other new feature is support for 3ds Max's 2D pan zoom mode. Now what that lets you do is actually zoom in and uh, pan around without losing your original camera or perspective view settings. Uh, so now I can go ahead and pan and zoom and as I do you'll see that uh, the area that Corona is displaying follows along to match. Uh, if I zoom back out you'll see the original rendered area from that camera is marked in yellow uh, and you will notice there is a difference of course in the uh, actual image ratio shown in the render versus in the viewport. Uh, the viewport just shows whatever's in the viewport no matter what width and height is set. Uh, but of course the Corona render does still follow the uh, width height set in the uh, original render size. Uh, so you will notice some difference between the uh, actual 3D Max viewport display and the uh, area showing up in the render and that's just because of that uh, aspect ratio of the image. Uh, and then when you're done you can just disable 2D pan and zoom and you are instantly back to your original camera or perspective position. Um, gives you the ability to zoom and pan around without uh, destroying your camera or perspective setup. Those were both introduced in the 1.6 daily build from December the 13th. Hope you find them useful.
Also added is the ability to generate stereo images uh, that are not 360 panoramas. All you need to do now is enable the virtual reality mod stereo without enabling a projection type override and you will get uh, two images left and right uh, side by side. Uh, these can be used to make images or animations for example to be placed on YouTube uh, and these are viewable on um, 3D TVs, 3D monitors, 3D laptops, and similar devices. Uh, of course, you'll need the relevant 3D glasses that go with the device, but that gives you another option for exporting stereo output from Corona.